What's up, everybody? Alex Fishbein back in the building with another Fishes Friday rant right before Christmas, right before the Christmas Day games coming up on Sunday. And just want to let you know right now, uh, we will have a roundtable out on the Basketball Society website, basketballsocietyonline.com, with questions about the Christmas Day games and uh, all of our, like, Pretty much all of our writers' thoughts on said questions. There are a certain amount of questions per game, so be on the lookout for that. BasketballSocietyOnline.com. You can find our new roundtable coming out for the Christmas Day games there. Anyway, we're back with a Fish's Friday rant. This is Alex Fishbine. This is what we do every Friday, every time we get on this camera, we talk about some of the hottest topics in the NBA, in the WNBA, in uh, the NCAA, and with basketball fans, coaches, media, whatever it may be. And this week we have two different things that we need to talk about, and they kind of fall under the same kind of category. They fall under the category of anger management and anger issues and entitlement and, you know, along the lines of that. So, to start things off, what I want to talk about first, we'll throw it over to the NCAA, we'll throw it over to North Carolina, to this school called Duke. You might have heard of it. They had this coach, you know, um, he goes by, like, coach and then, like, a letter K, and, you know, he coaches Team USA, and Duke's usually pretty good. They also have this guy named Grayson Allen, who people are now calling Graymon. Graymon, as in Draymond Green. Why, you might ask? Well, if you haven't already seen it, it is because he's now kicking his legs out, he's tripping people, and he's throwing little temper tantrums about it. So, if you haven't seen it, even if you have seen it, we're going we're gonna to look at this real quick here. So, the high screen, you know, the starts screen. with Elon going down the baseline. Grayson There's a foul Allen already, and then all of a sudden, Santa you know, right he just as we saw flails out. There. He blatantly, Allen like, he's looking at his, right his foot. foot. He's looking at his leg go up so to the ball. other player's leg and trip it. Now he goes back to the bench. You know, he's upset. He got a technical foul. He sits on the bench. Now this is when he turns to a six-year-old boy who didn't get what he wanted on Christmas Day. He just starts flipping out, throwing a temper tantrum, as if he didn't try to do this. And people are going to sit there and say, oh, you know, that's his competitive side of him. No, this is him being stupid. This is him being a baby about it and throwing a temper tantrum about something that he blatantly did. Don't, you, you, like, okay, I understand guys being competitive when, say, they might complain if they foul out. Or they might complain if they get two technicals and get thrown out of a game. Or maybe if it's a questionable call where, you know, they were going for a foul to stop a layup and it turned into a hard foul, but they didn't mean to turn it into a hard foul. That is understandable to be something to be upset about. This is not. Because you can see the intent. Like, when you watch the video, you see him, like... It's not like um, some of Draymond's leg kicks where he gets hit, he just flails. Like, that, like it's an automatic reaction. That's just what he does. Whereas, Grayson was just kind of, you know, getting pushed to the side, and he's spinning. You can spin without raising a leg, okay? I've done it before. I mean, it's not hard to do. And he wasn't, it didn't look like he was losing his balance until he brought his leg up and then went backwards. So, looking at the video, I completely understand what the refs were looking at when they gave him this technical foul. Because if I was one of those refs, I would have given him a technical foul also. And the, the fact that his leg started, like, well, I mean, started on the ground 
brought his leg up and kept bringing it even higher that eventually tripped the guy. It's it's really blatant and easy to see that this was not some kind of accident. This was not some kind of natural body movement that while he was moving, his leg just naturally came up that way. That's not what this is. Not at all. Not even a chance that this is what that was. Then, then, this is, the, <laughs> this is my favorite part. Like, this... This is like the icing on the cake. And this is why people don't like Duke. Then he goes back to the bench and he's noticeably upset. Okay, you can be upset, but, you know, just go to the bench, sit there, do your time, whatever it may be. But, oh, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I've, what I failed to mention is that this is a repeat offense for Grayson Allen. Like, he has done this kind of thing before. So now factor that into it, and you can see with the video, and that he's done it multiple times, it, it's there. Anyway, so he goes back to the bench, is upset, whatever, sits down, knows he's not going to be in the game, and then just proceeds to, like, throw his arms and curse and cry. He was legitimately crying. When you saw him with his towel wiping his face, there looked like there was tears in his eyes. And, dude, you're a college senior. Like, what are, what are you crying about? Why are you, this is your fault. It, like, he's over there and it looks like he's crying and upset and everything because, like, it looks like, oh, the people are out to get him. No, this is your doing. You're the one who's an idiot. Stop being dumb and then crying about being dumb. That's what this is coming off as. So what, like, where do you get the wherewithal to go back to the bench and just complain about it? Like, <laughs> I don't, like, I legit just do not understand. And... It did come out today that Coach K and everything announced that he is being suspended indefinitely. Will it be two or three games? Will it be the rest of the season? We're not going to know because it's indefinite, so we're just going to kind of find out as soon as they decide. But I really hope it's at least, like, at least seven to eight games because you don't teach a guy a lesson by just suspending him a couple games. It'd be like, okay, I missed a couple games, go out there and just keep playing and doing the same thing. But senior year, you suspend that guy like seven or eight games, that not only sends a message to him to stop being a baby, sends a message to everybody on the team and everybody who's going to be on the team that you don't stand for that kind of stupid stuff. And that's the kind of message you want to send, to be honest. Who wants a guy like that on their team? And who, like, when, you, uh, when you're looking at recruiting, yes, it, it is still pretty easy to recruit to Duke because it's Duke. They have a great basketball history. But if they see a guy like Grayson Allen on the team, what would make a recruit want to go and play for a guy who's going to sit there and cry about stuff like that? I don't want a teammate like that. I don't care, like, how good he is. Like, if he's Kobe and Kobe, like, how Kobe got upset at people and would kind of yell at people, I understand that because Kobe isn't, like, crying and everything based off of something that's his own fault. He's trying to, like, he's yelling at guys. That's how Kobe worked. He just yelled at guys, and that's how he got his point across. But Kobe never, like, got a technical foul by tripping or doing something stupid and then complained about it or cried about it on the bench and flipped out and had a temper tantrum. He just didn't. So, the next thing that I want to talk about is this whole George Carl ripping Carmelo and a lot of the Nuggets players and the the book he has coming out now let's start with the name of the book 
Furious George. First off, if you want us to take you seriously, you do not name your book based off of like a wordplay of Curious George. You named your book as like a pun or wordplay off of a book about a monkey, a cartoon monkey. That was like a lovable character and it's fun, it's happy, whatever it may be. So now, first impression, I'm looking at this title and I'm saying, is this supposed to be like a joke? Like, are are, uh, are you kind of saying this as in like, ha ha, I might have been furious sometimes, but I'm not really furious that much. I don't really get what you're trying to say with that. Like, I understand that you're an angry old man now and whatever it may be. But anyway, moving past the title and everything, getting on to the comments about Carmelo, Kenyon Martin, J.R. Smith, and the rest of the Nuggets and everything. He comes at Carmelo for his play. He comes at Kenyon Martin for his play as well, like in his friendship with Carmelo. He says that Carmelo is a is like the best offensive player he's ever coached. Didn't give anything on defense, was not a leader. You would hope that your best player, your star player is a leader, but he wasn't. Um, that he was a selfish player, had a bad attitude, whatever it may be. Now, let me say this right off the bat. If you're a coach, hey, go ahead, criticize players for their play, criticize them for what they may or may not have done on the court or in practice, things like that, like leadership abilities, whatever. I understand if you're criticizing that kind of thing. The moment he brought into this the fact that him, Kenny Martin and whatever, did not have a father is the moment you went way too far. That's when you cross the line. This is like Colin Coward talking about John Wall and how he's not going to be a good enough point guard because he doesn't he didn't have a dad. What kind of stupid stuff is this? And yes, I am keeping it more PG here. I can say many many other words that better describe how I'm feeling. But come on, man. Really? What makes you bring that into this equation? What even, what like, what goes on in your mind that you decide to say, oh, he's not a stand-up guy because he doesn't have a dad? Seriously? I know plenty of women who are better men than most men. Plenty of, of, single moms who do a lot more in life than than dads do that dads that are there so first off this comment is way off base in that standpoint second off it's way off base in the fact that why are you inserting yourself into his personal life when you were just his head coach like i said if you're criticizing his play what he does on the court, his leadership on the court, his practice, whatever. I get it. That was going way too far. Way too far. And the whole fact of this book, now to quote a co-worker and friend of mine, this book is pretty much like the burn book from Mean Girls, if you've ever seen that movie. Like, after reading that, just like those few excerpts, it, it pretty much sets it up to look like that each chapter is just going to be him flaming on players from each team that he coached. That's really all it looks like it's going to be. Flaming on players, GMs, refs, other coaches, whatever. That really looks like it's what it, that, that is what it's going to be. Like, it, it even said when I was reading, like, the, the, uh, like the little summary of it on Amazon or whatever... It was talking about that he also talked about Allen Iverson. 
He talks about, you know, the, the, the Sonics when he coached them. If he had this kind of stuff for Melo, after how, like, Larry Brown kind of reacted with Allen Iverson in Philly, I'm, I'm really curious to see what George Carl has to say about Allen Iverson. Because if he has this kind of stuff to say about J.R., Melo, Kenya Martin, and all of those guys, he's going to have something stupid and crazy to say about Iverson, too, most likely. And the thing is, like, it's cool that George Carl has all these wins, but normally these coaches that have a lot of these wins are staying with the same team for a long time. Example, Popovich. Example, Phil Jackson, who stayed with the Bulls for a while, then stayed with the Lakers for a while. George Carl doesn't stay out on these teams coaching for that long. He stayed on the Nuggets the longest. That was the longest tenure. But usually, he gets ousted because everyone hates him. So, I don't really know how that exactly makes you a great coach if everybody hates you. Like, I don't understand how that's good for business. I don't understand how that's good in, like, the long run of your coaching tenure. So now, let, let's let's look at this. Now, everyone already hates you. They already hate you. Now you're going to bring out a book to flame on the people that already hate you. Do you want to start fights? Do you want to start this kind of stuff? Is this what you want? Why can't you just write a book on your experiences and kind of just give a brief overview of things? Okay, all right, you know what? Maybe not. Let me back up because that probably wouldn't sell because nobody cares because they hate him. So instead, if you want to make money, even though, you know, I guess making millions as an NBA coach wasn't enough. If you want to make money on the book, you got to start some crazy stuff. And that apparently is what happened. Um, I I like all of the, the tweets from Kenyon Martin, from Wilson Chandler, from Reggie Evans, from J.R. Smith. I like all of those. They were all great responses because George Carl deserves to be talked at like this now because this is really stupid and dumb and childish and so to wrap everything up this week maybe Grayson Allen is like a long lost grandson of George Carl and George Carl is also his private coach and that's how we got him anyway thank you guys for watching another episode of Fish's Friday Rant I will be back next week, and um, anyone who watches the or listens to the Atlantic Files, my other podcast on the Basketball Society Network, um, I'm still trying to find a guest to come on for our special 50th episode. So that is why that haven't that hasn't come out yet. That will be out sometime soon. Um, just giving you a heads up. But as always, check out our Twitter at Bball Society underscore. And our website, basketballsocietyonline.com. And as always, have a great week, have a happy holiday, and a Merry Christmas. And I'll see you guys next week. Peace.